So, yeah, you've read the title correctly. I am attempting to create a Pokemon game, or rather a Pokemon framework, using Unreal Engine. But why exactly? Well, ultimately because I can, but also because using an engine like this will give me some insight into how the process of making these games actually goes. What are all the considerations that I need to make, and what tools do these game engines give that make the process just that much easier? Or more difficult in some cases, as we'll see. And yes, I know what some of you are probably envisioning when I mentioned making a Pokemon game in Unreal Engine. And I'm flattered. That is not where my skill set lies, though. So we're actually going to use it to make a 2D game, which is, you know, a little overkill, but why not? So first, let's give a little bit of overview of what the Unreal Engine tooling is exactly. So Unreal Engine is a popular 3D game engine created by Epic Games. What makes this engine unique and so widely used is the way in which Epic has made it available. Epic Games has made this tool available for free, only charging royalties on gross revenue over a million dollars, which makes it that much more approachable than other engines which require you to pay for a license up front. The other thing that makes Unreal fairly interesting is that it is completely open source. That is, the code is publicly accessible. You have to request access through your Epic Games account, but it is a completely automated process. It doesn't go through anyone. You just have to link your account to GitHub and then you get access to it. And that means that you can not only build the engine from the original source code, but you can also modify it if you need to change something about it to fit your needs. Beyond that, it is extremely extensible. You can take a version installed from the Epic Games launcher and add more functionality to the engine that wasn't originally there. And so, what tools does this give us specifically that, say, other tools like Pokemon Essentials lack? Well, Pokemon Essentials is made with RPG Maker XP, and in my video on the kit, I did mention that there are ways to get around some of the limitations and age of the engine, but there's still a lot of roundabout ways that Pokemon Essentials goes about implementing all of its various features. And a lot of that's due to the fact that RPG Maker on its own is not the most flexible tool. The database that is provided by the tool is completely static. You cannot change what is displayed in that menu. Whereas with Unreal Engine, as I mentioned, you can do that. And so that is part of the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. Also the fact that just getting back into coding Ruby, I've just gotten more annoyed with it after being exposed to other languages. So I wanted to try coding in some languages that I am a little more, let's just say, comfortable and okay with. So I guess we'll jump into what are the languages that you use to program in the Unreal Engine. So there are three main languages that make up the programming aspects of the engine. The first and arguably most approachable and well known is Unreal's Blueprint system. This is kind of an interesting way to go about creating games. Instead of writing lines of code, you are connecting nodes on a visual graph. It is phenomenal for prototyping as well as things like the UI, as well as things that might involve various types of timing, such as needing to execute something after so many seconds or have some sort of movement timeline, something that is a little bit more sophisticated and less straightforward when you're working with pure code. However, you'll find that it gives you a fairly limited access to the engine's features. There's a lot of things that the engine can do that you can't do strictly with blueprints. Another issue is due to the way that all the nodes connect, things that might be a simple line of code, such as say a mathematical formula, can be quite complicated using the system. This is also a system where anything that involves any meaningful type of complexity can quickly turn into a mess. Literal spaghetti code, so to speak. However, it is an integral part of the engine, and for my purposes, I do want to take advantage of what this system has to offer. However, let's move into sort of what is the core lifeblood of this particular engine, and that is the C++ aspect. This is what the engine itself is actually coded in, and is actually what controls the blueprint system to begin with. As such, it gives you a bit more finer grain control over various aspects. It's no surprise that this is the language chosen to compile the engine in. This is actually the most popular language used for game development, due to its combination of high-level features while still maintaining a decent level of performance. This language, however, is quite old. It was initially developed by a Danish man working for AT&T's Bell Labs, a man known as Bjorn Straustra. His original intent when creating the language was to enhance the existing C language, a language that is even older 
and more simplistic. However, since then, the language has begun to take on an identity of its own. This identity really took its shape with the release of C++11. This edition of the language introduced something that fundamentally makes it different than C. That central premise being what's known as RAII, Resource Acquisition is Initialization. To break it down into a little bit more of layman's terms, C++ is what's known as an object-oriented language. It means that it encapsulates data and functionality into smaller chunks known as objects. And in C++, objects have a very specific lifestyle, one that begins with a function called a constructor and ends with a function called a destructor. These two functions are what enables this entire pattern. C and by extension C++ are both what are known as memory unsafe languages. They give the programmer manual control over memory, which can lead to a bunch of various issues. Ones that are so prevalent that over 50 years on, these issues are still a problem plaguing the security space. One that even the White House has acknowledged calling out these two specific languages in a recent executive order. And so how does this concept of RAII fit into helping to eliminate that aspect? RAII objects are designed under the premise that during the constructor, the memory in question is acquired, hence the concept of acquisition is initialization. And then during the destructor, that resource is then released. However, C++ is still technically a memory unsafe language and is also fairly complicated to learn. It has a lot of features, I'm going to list just some of them on the screen next to me. And so there's a lot of things you have to be aware of in order to program in the language efficiently. That's why I said in my Pokemon Essentials video, if anyone says they're an expert at C++, run. There is too much going on in this language to ever truly have mastered it. I'd say I'm pretty proficient at it, but I know there's a lot of things I need to learn still. And another problem that makes the language so difficult to understand is that different frameworks can oftentimes look and feel like their own programming language in and of itself. Unreal Engine is notorious for this. It has its own internal Unreal header tool, which essentially generates a bunch of code that the engine uses to run various aspects of the game. This means a huge chunk of how a lot of objects interact with the engine itself are abstracted away from you. And it also places a lot of limitations on what your C++ code can do in order to interact with the engine. It also, kind of technically violates some of the RAI principles I talked about, opting instead for a pattern known as garbage collection, which is used by other high-level languages like Java and C Sharp to manage its memory. However, since it's C++ and so long as the code compiles, you can use it, that means you can just write code that doesn't interface directly with the engine and do whatever you want and code it in the specific style that you desire. And that's what gives you so much power. You're able to basically circumvent the restrictions of the blueprint system and also use it to define your own custom elements in the blueprint system that you otherwise couldn't. Moving on to the third language in question here, and that language is Python. Oh God, I, I have nothing but positive things to say about Python. It is a fantastic language. I love it. Now, where Python fits into the engine is not in the actual game itself, but in automating tasks for the editor. There are frameworks that exist to make Python usable in the engine itself, but it's primarily designed for editor scripting. For example, say you have a bunch of configurations that are set up in a text file and you want to import them into a format that the engine can understand. Instead of going through and copying all of that by hand, you could write a Python script that defines all of that functionality for you essentially allowing you to automate and go over large chunks of data and not have to deal with all the menial tasks that you might otherwise have to do. And that's what Python and scripting languages in general are very good at. The ability to quickly and rapidly develop utilities like this that make it such a powerful asset with the engine, even if it's a little roundabout to use versus ordinary Python. But that's enough about the engine's tooling itself. Let's talk about sort of my design approach is specifically tailored to that of a Pokemon game. The first thing I've done is I've broken up this kit into a bunch of different what are known as modules. That is, grouping the code into small, essentially detachable components that interact with each other, but can be used on their own. For example, the top-down grid-based movement system and some of the lower level aspects of the UI are created in a way that they don't rely on any Pokemon-specific logic to be used. 
meaning they can be taken and put into basically any other kind of RPG. This is also going to make it possible to say take out the 2D top-down component and make a 3D game if that is what interests you. Especially because Unreal's 2D is not the greatest in the world, although I'm trying to do my best to make it a little bit more approachable. And that's sort of what my approach is, is doing all of the hard work so that people who use it don't have to do as much. And it'll be a little bit more approachable, similar to how Pokemon Essentials is, but you've got a little bit more fine-grained control over things. So the ultimate approach is that the majority of the code is going to be written in C++, with things like the trainer, Pokemon, bag, and other logic being handled specifically in a C++ layer that is not directly accessible to the editor. And that means that I have a little bit more flexibility to do what I want, and then only expose what I need as I need it. A lot of the code is going to be similar in design to how Pokemon Essentials handles its stuff. Obviously, Pokemon Essentials is written in Ruby, so I've had to port a lot of it over, but in terms of the data structures themselves, they're going to look a little similar. And part of that is just because they've done so much that it makes it easy for me to just look at what they've done and implement that myself. For example, the PBS text files that define all of the data within Pokemon Essentials are fairly easy to import into an Unreal data table using a Python script, which is what I have done. I've also decided to use a lot of their RPG Maker XP formatted assets, such as their character sprites and icons, and use those to create my systems. There will be some differences. For example, a lot of the UI is going to be a little different due to the fact that I am going to allow it to accommodate different aspect ratios, whereas Pokemon Essentials was stuck on a 4x3 ratio. Beyond that, like with Pokemon Essentials, extensibility is at the forefront of my mind. How do I make this tool not only easy to use, but also flexible enough that you can extend it without having to rewrite core aspects of the engine? Languages like Ruby have the advantage of being what's known as dynamically rewritable. That is, the functionality that has been previously defined can be taken and just completely overwritten. C++ being a compiled language does not have that capability. And so I have to come up with a slightly different approach to allow this extensibility. So what I decided to do is to break some of the features down into smaller abstract chunks. And at the top level, you have a version that is defined that just says what this class can do, but doesn't actually have any of the implementation to calculate the stats. Instead, what I can do is say, I want to use this particular version of it. This is what's known as dependency injection. You basically define an abstract contract of what you want the code to do, but allow programmers to swap out the particular version of that functionality that they want to use. For example, right now in the Pokemon class, there is a data structure that defines a Pokemon stats. In this version, you could roll with the default implementation that is currently in the engine, or you could create a new one that say, recreates the system from Pokemon Legends Arceus. And I guess the last thing I want to go over in this video is, what are my explicit goals? with this kit so far. So my first goal is to create what I'm going to define as a minimally playable vertical slice. That is all of the basic functionality, but none of the more complex details. So I'll have the ability to set a move effect, but most of the moves will not be defined. And I've broken the requirements down into three main categories. That is overworld related requirements, UI-related requirements, and battle-related requirements. So for the overworld, fairly simple. You can navigate around the overworld, interact with various objects, talk to NPCs, pick options, get into random encounters, and so forth. On the UI side, I want to at least have the party screen, Pokemon summary, bag, trainer card, and options menus created. Everything else will be there in the menu, but it won't actually do anything. In terms of battle, for now I'm going to stick with just implementing the mechanics needed for single battles, but in such a way that doubles and even triples and maybe even rotation battles should be possible. I also intend to have some of the basic aspects of using moves in effect, such as moves having a limited number of uses, as well as the damage and accuracy calculations. I also will have some basic move effects that are fairly common, such as status effects and recoil implemented, but none of the more specific details. And that being things like, say, the way moves like Sky Drop work, for instance. We're also gonna have things like being able to catch Pokemon, gaining experience and leveling up, and learning moves upon level up. The player should also be able to switch out 
and the trainer should have a fairly basic AI that's a little bit more complicated than just randomly picking a move. And for those of you who are curious to see what I've been up to, all of the code so far is currently available on my GitHub. The link for that will be available in the description. So far, I've got a fair amount of stuff that I've worked on. If anyone wants to contribute, I'm not opposed to it, but I'm also not asking for it. However, with that, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. This will be a fairly exciting project. It's also part of why I haven't made a video in such a while, because I've been working heavily on that. Also, Persona 3 Reload, which I finished finally. But now Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is out, so we'll see when I actually get this out. Hopefully sooner rather than later, because I've got some other videos on the back burner that I want to get back to after I finished with this. But with that, I'll see you guys next time.